research that's used by the biotech industry for their claims for safety have been described by other scientists as rigged to avoid finding problems. They over-pasteurized milk 120 times longer than normal. They heated corn four and a half times more than normal before searching for intact protein. They used mature animals instead of young ones in feeding trials. They diluted their soy 10 to 1 before feeding it to the animals. They omitted the most incriminating research about differences in nutrients between the genetically modified soy and the non-genetically modified soy. The federal government is not ensuring that our food is healthy. The state government is not ensuring that our food is healthy. There is not an effective regulatory mechanism in place. The FDA does not require even to be notified by a biotech company if they're going to introduce a genetically modified crop. Although most companies say that they participate in a voluntary consultation in which they meet with an FDA person to discuss safety. They can show the summary data, choose what data they want to show, and they receive a letter from the FDA saying that the biotech industry company believes its own foods are safe. One company was an exception, that's Calgene. The Calgene created the Flavor Saver Tomato, designed for longer shelf life, although it's off the shelf so it didn't work and they introduced it as the first genetically modified crop. So they asked the, the FDA to actually look at the detailed studies of a feeding trial. They fed the tomato to some rats. Actually, they force fed the tomato because the rats refused to eat it. Several developed stomach lesions. And if you read the actual documents from the FDA scientists, they said there are outstanding questions about safety related to these stomach lesions that have not been answered. And yet the FDA approved the flavor saver tomato. It also turns out that 7 out of 40 rats died within two weeks after eating the genetically modified tomato and were replaced in the study without explanation. Recently it was found that rats that were fed genetically modified soy had misshapen cells in their livers and no research has been done to follow that up. In June of 2003, scientists reported that the gene sequence of the inserted genes into, into crops had actually changed their order, they had re-scrambled. So the genetic inserts are not stable. Another laboratory confirmed this and found that it had changed in the same varieties in different ways that they had tested. So not only is it unstable and changing, it's not even uniform in the way it's changing. This is incredibly dangerous. A genetically modified food supplement called L-tryptophan was responsible for the deaths of about 100 Americans and caused 5 to 10,000 people to fall sick in the 1980s. The biotech industry claimed that the, the Japanese company that was genetically engineering its bacteria to produce this food supplement more economically, that that bacteria wasn't the problem, it was a change in the filter in early 1989. However, new information shows that hundreds of people got sick during the five, four years prior to the change in the filter. Now, what does this mean? It dismantles this alternative explanation and puts the blame squarely on genetic engineering. What's really a shame, however, is that the Food and Drug Administration of the United States knew this information and never went 